So the guys, welcome back to Shadowrun. Let me close this shit and let me just quickly... Can I adjust my volume from here? Is that it? No. What's that? No. 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 From here? Ah, okay. There we go, just drop that a little bit. Right, cool, ready. Um, talk to Mallet about playing back a DVD is where we're up to. We need to go see what's on this disc. Is this Mallet? Seems as though she has a yellow thing above her head. <laughs> I sit down there and see what she's got to say. Welcome back. What can I do for you? I had some broken drone. I acquired this drone. Can you get it up and running? Ah. Yeah, probably. It might take a bit of doing, though. I love working on these old core drones. Can't make you any guarantees, but either way, it's on the house. Oh, wow. Cool. Wow. Drone. Drone fix, guys. Holy shit, that's going to be exciting. Uh, there was something else. Yes, go on then, I'm listening. Um, I'm looking for someone that can play back a DVD-RW. Really, that is old tech. Very old, in fact. Just a moment, I will go look. She turns to rummage through a bin of obsolete components at the back of her stall. Ah oh, yes, here we are. The dwarf wrestles a, a, a mid-sized flat-screen display out of the bin. This display has old enough hookups to connect to a DVD player. RCA, you know, vintage. The player itself, though, this I do not have. You may wish to try your look down at the junkyard. There's a scavenger there, a primitive man with a crude disposition. If anyone here in the cruise bazaar can help you find your DVD player, he can. But he will almost certainly attempt to overcharge you for it. She takes a deep breath and smiles up at you. But you are not here for gossip. Shall we conclude our business? I could give you the display for, say, 200 new gen. Paul Amstel says to charge it to his account. Ah, uh, very well. I will have it packaged up and delivered to Herr Amstel straight away. Best of luck finding your DVD reader. I wish you well. Look for a DVD player at the junkyard. Okay, we'll do that. Somewhere over here. Is that the junkyard? Where is the junkyard? Over here! Over here is the junkyard, apparently. The shady looking guy, Scrotty. Hello, Scrotty. A stout old man looks up from whatever old tech he's tinkering with to squint at you through thick old bashing glasses. He's not actually wearing any glasses though, is he? <laughs> He pushes them up with an oil-stained finger as he straightens up to nod at you. He speaks with a gruff but well-meaning tone, heavily accented with German tonality. Guten Tag, what can I do for you? Uh, Marlit tells me you're the man to speak to about DVDs. That little shrew sent you my way, huh? Scotty's smile broadens. Well, wonders never cease. Well, introductions are in order, I suppose. Scotty Buckman at your service. <laughs> wow. The old man raises a grimy hand in salute. Need something salvaged, some old components. Vilikt, I'm indeed your man. What? Wonderful. How about DVD player? Well, let's see. I think that I've got something that'll work for you. Scotty rummages through the junk heaped on the table behind him. A few seconds later, he snatches a battered plastic lozenge shape from the pile. Ah, uh, here we go. An old Korean player that I dug up last week. 2010 model. A real beauty. Scotty's smile broadens. He gives you a conspiratorial wink. I fixed her up and got her running, but without any disc to read, I've mostly been using her as a paperweight. Sounds like what I'm looking for. How much do you want for it? Scotty glances back at the DVD player, a rueful expression on his face. Well, I'll admit, I'm a little loath to part of her. There's plenty of folks out there who'd really appreciate an older player such as this, and I don't know what your intentions are for it. I suppose, given the time and trouble I took putting her back together, that I'd be willing to part with her for, oh, say, Scotty's eyes dart over your gear, calculated expression on his face, about 500 new yen. Uh, that's ridiculous. I could buy a new Trivid player for that. Yeah, but you can get one of those anywhere. You ain't going to find one of these anytime soon, and it's not like I get offers to buy these every day, so I'll cut you a deal. I'll 350 sound. Ooh, charisma. Half that and you've got yourself a deal. I'm not overfond of your tone, but it's not every day I get asked to sell any of my projects. that would be 175 new yen, if you please. Yeah, okay. That's fine. I'll pay that. <laughs> I think we got a good price out of him there. Squatty ging gingerly picks up the ancient device on the table and presses it into your hands. The plastic is scuffed and worn and it rattles a bit when you move it. Give us some good use, okay? We will do. We're going to go watch some DVDs, Scrotty. Let's head back to Paul Amsel. 
and see what we're going to do with our DVD player. Sort of eager to know what's on the discs. I don't know. I don't know if you guys are sort of into this or not. It's like I've not had any comments on the Shadowrun series at all so far. So I don't really know how well it's going down. But I'm enjoying it. Because this is totes my sort of game. I think the two games I've had the most fun playing this year so far are this and Stardew Valley. They're both very good games. Paul, we have a DVD player. It seems that Amsel has assembled the team in your absence. They stand in a group around the old display that you had Marlet deliver. On their faces you can see excitement and apprehension, curiosity and dread. Slick, have you procured a DVD reader? I have. It's right here. Good. This should only take me a moment. Amsel disappears behind the ancient display. After a few minutes of fiddling with its battered inputs, he reappears, a satisfied look on his face. Everything appears to be functional. The dish should be ready to play. Well, don't keep us in suspense. Start the damn thing already. Slick went to the trouble of fetching everything. Let him do the honours. Amsel steps back, clearing a path for you to access the antique machine. It's all the way over there for some reason. Watch DVD. A soft whirring sound fills the air as the ancient DVD player spins the disc up to speed. The scratched LCD display comes to life and a menu fills the screen. Let's play them in order then. Track 1. The screen goes black and a cheerful digital chiming sound spills out of the display's speakers. A crackle of static fills the air, coupled with a shrill electronic whine. After a few moments, the display goes live and a dishevelled looking man appears on the screen. His eyes glitter with excitement. The timestamp on the screen is 2034-09-15. So the 15th of September, 2034. Adrian Vauclair. Uh, what, what kind of voice would this guy have? It's doing the sort of high-pitched one. Hermie, I think we found her. After all this time, for Schwingy. I knew that she wasn't dead. His speech is jittery. You can hear the urgency in his voice. She survived the Dragonfall, just as I've always said. I knew it, and I was right. The screen explodes into static, and the electronic whine in the background sharpens into a needle-like pulse of high-pitched sound. Somewhere in the background, Dante lets out a low whimper. The screen clears and the excited face is closer to the screen than it was before. The words spill out of him in a breathless tide. Taking a team into the socks to retrieve her, the radiation be damned. We will take appropriate precautions, of course, but we must go. Hermie, I think that the body may be nearby as well. Somehow it, she, has survived for all of this time. It's sort of gone really English for some reason. <laughs> the screen explodes into static again and then clears. The figure flickers across the screen. May not be back for some time. Look after Mum, okay? I worry about her. And Hermie, stay safe out there. I know that things are heating up in Berlin, and I know you. Student protest, civil uprising, you'll be in the middle of it, I'm sure. Just stay safe, all right? And I'll do my best to do the same. I don't know what's going to happen when I step into the socks, but I do know one thing. If the Firewing is still a danger, I will put an end to her, once and for all. The display goes black, and the background wine fades away. A moment later, you find yourself deposited back at the menu screen. Play track two. <coughs> The screen goes black for a moment, then a figure appears on the screen, your late client Green Winters. His elbow is planted on the table that he's seated at, and his chin rests on his palm. The other hand is wrapped around a bottle of cheap whiskey. The time step on the video reads, Christmas Day 2053. Found the message Adrian left me all those years ago, got it cleaned up as best I could. Strange hearing his voice again. He pauses to take a long pull on the bottle. It's good to hear him, even if he did insist on calling me Hermie. Dr. Adrian Vauclair, the hero of the people, the dragon slayer, my brother. Oh, well. <laughs> he grimaces and rubs his eyes. Hard to believe it's been almost 20 years. All right, so I'm going to start recording these DVDs again. For me, for Adrian, for whoever I might wind up watching them. Every time I do this, it winds up feeling like a waste of time, but I keep doing it anyway, on the off chance that I'll find something important. If I stumble into the clue that leads me to my brother, I know that I'm going to want it on film. I've been doing this for almost 20 years now, after all. No sense in quitting now. Christ, 20 years. All this time and still no leads. Even with all my contacts and my resources, it takes another long swallow of cheap liquor. Even with my legendary bullheadedness, I've made no progress at all. I haven't set up a single goddamn thing. When I said something funny, the closest I've gotten to a clue was a rumour. Apparently a team emerged from the socks a while back. Nobody's clear on the date, but, and get this, he leans into the camera and gives a conspiratorial wink. Supposedly they vanished without a trace. He upends the bottle, drains it, slams it back down to the table. His eyes are rimmed with red. Not much of a rumour, considering I already know that you're gone, big brother. I live with that every day. 
Abruptly, Winters leads forwards and reaches for something off screen. The display goes black. A few seconds later, the main menu returns. Track 3. There's a grinding sound from the DVD tray, and Green Winters' image appears on the screen. Eager look on his face. The timestamp reads 12th of October 2054. Stumbled upon this archival footage of Fashwinga's original attack, months before the dragon fall. Easy to forget how devastating it was. Agent saved a lot of people by bringing her down. I've got all the footage all queued up to play. Starting it now. Additional comments to follow. The slow whir of the DVD player shifts to a high-pitched whine. A distorted, wavering image blooms into being uh, blooms into being on the screen. A timestamp in the upper right corner of the screen marks the date, July the 6th, 2012. Oh, wow! It's difficult to make out what you're seeing at first. The screen is dark and smoky, and the telltale flashes of emergency vehicle lights flicker on the periphery of the screen. This is cool as fuck. <laughs> I'm so impressed. The camera pushes in, and you can make out two figures standing in a ruined landscape. All at once, the sound cuts in. Uh, again, for those of you just joining us, we are coming to you live from Stolberg. A few hours ago, the dragon for Schwingy launched an unprovoked attack on the Sleepy Hearts mountain town, and you can see the results behind me. Fire, ashes, and blood. We are joined tonight by a survivor of this latest and most horrifying attack. The reporter f uh, turns to face a pale man standing behind him. Sir, I understand that you've been through a terrible ordeal. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us tonight. The camera switches focus to a middle-aged man with a haunted look in his eyes. He stammers out a reply. Yeah, yeah, of course. If you're good, sir, could you please tell the people at home about your experience of the attack? It, it was horrible. Just, just pure chaos. So many people are dead. People I knew, mostly alive, are trampled to death trying to escape. My own house was burnt to the ground during the attack. My family. We have nothing now. You all made it through the attack, though. Your wife, your kids. Yeah, we all made it, thank God. We rode out the attack in a small shelter. Me, my wife, and our two daughters. The shelter had protected us, but the heat was just unbearable. We couldn't stay in there much longer than we did. How long were you holed up in there? Three, maybe four hours, I don't know. We just stayed inside until the heat died down and the screaming stopped. And what happened after that? When it was over, you know, when the air cooled down, the reporter nods and the man continues, we, st we stepped outside. There was nothing left, just smouldering wreckage and the dense cloud of black oily smoke and the stench in the air. God, that smell. It smelled like roasting meat. There's a long pause. From the tortured look on his face, you can tell the man is struggling to decide whether or not to continue speaking. Eventually, he does. My ghost. They found what was left of their nanny outside. Her body, what was left of it, was slumped against the shelter door. I kept telling myself that I couldn't hear her pounding to get in, but that, that isn't true. I could. I just couldn't bring myself to open that door. I couldn't risk my family like that. Not for her, not for anyone. Thank you, sir, for taking the time to speak with us. Yeah. You heard it here. An absolutely chilling account of tonight's attack. Again, the town of Stolberg has been reduced to ash, another victim of the fire wing. Stay with us for more up to the minute reporting on Fishwinger's reign of terror. Now over to Bobby with the weather. <laughs> Green Winter's face reappears on the screen. Okay, it's time for a new approach. Agents are complete dead end. That much is pretty clear by now. So I'm going to do some digging on Fishwinger instead. Let's see where this goes. The screen abruptly cuts black as the video cuts off. A few moments later, you find yourself returned to the menu screen. Ah, man, a lot of reading. Holy shit. I love it. The DVD player ramps up to speed, filling the air with a shrill whining sound. Green Winter's image appears on the screen. The timestamp on the video reads 31st of October 2054. Well, that was a bust. Little progress on for Schwingy either, shakes his head. I know, it's weird. The information is out there, it's just wrong somehow. It's too well laid out, too simple. The real life is messy, and this feels just a little too neat. That's not the only thing that's nagging at me. I'm getting that tingly feeling all up and down the back of my neck again. It feels like I've been tracked. I'm no Matrix hotshot like Clockwork or Schaefer, but I'm good enough to know when someone's on my scent. Got to install some new security measures. Can't be too careful. Winter's image disappears, the display goes black. Track 5. The display goes blank for a moment. Green Winters winks into the screen. Seated at the computer, off to his left, an enormous monitor fills the screen. His voice carries an edge of panic. The timestamp on the video reads 9th of November 2054. Christ, I'm getting too close to something. There's a trail of bodies and there've been disappearances. Gearbox, Martian, Peregrine, they've all disappeared within the past few years. Gearbox just went AWOL yesterday and they were, they were all making the same sorts of inquiries about the firing that I've been. There are ghost stories spreading around the Decker community. Stories about Deckers disappearing and then showing up again later, but but wrong somehow. Scary stuff. I'm starting to think that it's true. Blitz leads in to whisper to you. 
I know the stories he's talking about, Chief. Never really put much stock in them. Not until now. Could these rumors be related to what's happening here? Am I being paranoid? He pauses for a moment, as if seriously considering the question. Then he shakes his head and slams his fist on the table. No, no, I don't think so. Something big is happening here, and I'm right in the middle of it. Aga cuts in. Metal Gear. That's a bit of a leap. One other thing. Tolstoy told me a story about a kill team that might be related to all of this. Apparently a decker named Hellball pause, posted a theory about fish winging to the shadow of BBS about five years ago. About an hour later, a mill-spec team showed up in meat space and cooked her entire apartment with her in it. If what Tolstoy told me was true, Hellball live posted the event. She described her killer, this great big orc with skin grafts. Oh shit, son. Then the whole thread disappeared, gone without a trace. Leap, <laughs> leap, I love. Sounds like he's on the right track to me. Iger holds on silence, but concedes the point with a small nod. On the screen, Winters pauses. He looks like he's working up to something. Finally, he speaks. I'm just gonna, gonna go ahead and say it. This has got to be for Schwingy. All of it. Agent was right about her. She's still alive and she's out the socks. She's covering her tracks, working in the shadows, preparing to rise again. And that means I have to find you, Adrian. For everyone's sake. Thankfully, I've got a lead. For the first time in two decades, I've got a solid goddamn lead. I've backtraced, wow, I've backtraced all the Matrix nodes that Hellboy was looking into back before she got cooked. Well, who's been purging the Matrix didn't think about that, and I found out that she'd turned up. Winston stabs a few keys on his keyboard and an image expands to fill the screen of his monitor, a satellite photo of a rural landscape, annotated with GPS data, a set of map coordinates. So now I've got a target, a place to start digging, the Harfield Manor, conveniently located on an isolated stretch of countryside, miles away from prying eyes. Matrix records indicate that some sort of data vault exists beneath the estate, so that's what I need to get into. And this is where we came in. As if on cue, a familiar image winks onto the monitor to Winters' his left. Monica. I think I'm going to tap Schaefer for this job. She's got the skill to bypass whatever security they're running out there, and she's gullible enough to take the job in the first place. I'll fill her some line about Flux State Security, and she'll eat up with a spoon. I wonder. Amstel's voice is choked with rage. I wonder. On the display, Winter's mouth parts into a broad grin. Time to put plans into motion. By this time tomorrow night, I should have the information that I need. And on the off chance that Schaefer gets taken out, well, that'll tell me something too. Can't make an omelette and all that. Until then. Winter's image disappears. The display goes black. A few seconds later, the main menu returns. Holy shit, this is getting dramatic, guys. My god. Mm. Oh my god, it's all starting to sort of link together now. The awkward, the skin grafts for Schwingy burning down the place. Oh shit. Play track six. When you play the sixth track, a small video window appears. You recognize the scene in the window. You are looking at the tattered drapes and nicotine stained wallpaper of Winters' hotel room at Das Kessel House. The timestamp on the video reads 10th of November 2054. There is a blur of motion, and the haggard form of Green Winters lumbers into frame. Suspicions confirmed. Schaefer, dead Christ. Winters reaches a shaking hand off camera. A moment later he returns, clutching a cheap plastic drinking glass. He got something down, wipes his mouth with the back of his hand and takes a deep breath. Okay, 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 okay. Back up, slow down, start from the beginning. Winters closes his eyes and makes a visible effort to calm himself. When he speaks again, his voice is steady. Got the call from my contract in the cruise, uh, the cruise bazaar. Schaefer killed on the estate run. Matrix security of the estate cooked her brain. Considering Schaefer's skill and experience, on-site IC must have been extreme, even by Berlin standards. Security of that kind costs money, real money. Given the evidence uncovered so far, corporate involvement unlikely. The connection to the Firewing is too strong. So, let's come right out and say it. The Dragon is what we're dealing with here, and the smart money says that she's coming for me next. Well, I won't go down without a fight. I've still got my contacts, still got my connections, and the Flux State could be a hell of a weapon for the man who knows how to manipulate it. Winters takes another long pull from his glass, grimaces and swallows. Time for me to make my play. Ghost stories or no, missing deckers or no. I've, I've got to jack into the Matrix and start pulling strings. The countermeasures that I installed earlier should be more than enough to keep me safe for the 20 minutes I'll be in there. Winters drains the rest of the glass and tosses it back over his shoulder. A moment later you hear the dull clattering sound of hard plastic on lino linoleum. Schaefer's death was tragic. She was a staunch support of the F-State, but still, all things considered... Winters fishes for something off screen. A moment later, his hand reappears, clutching a data jack cable. Better her than me. He plugs the cable into his head, and the screen cuts to static. Whoo! As your finger nears the eject button, a black screen cuts in over the static. A moment later, Green Winters' haggard face appears. If you're watching this, then I guess that they caught up to me. They'll be after you too now. Blitz whispers into your ear again, more harsher this time. 
What the hell is this? Why didn't you warn me about this before I came here? Hey everybody, Blitz is scared. We didn't know. Not exactly. Not exactly? I didn't come here to get hungry by a dragon. I'm not even a part of this. You are now, whether you like it or not. So quiet down and stop bothering him. Whoever you are, whatever you think you're after, you need to find Dr. Adrian Vauclair. Not because he's my brother, because if her shrink is rising again, he's the only one who can stop her. You've seen what happens to people who get too close to this. I'm dead, and dozens of others have died. You'll be next, unless you can find Adrian. The screen cuts back to static. The message is over. The DVD tray slides out of the reader. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, sensing that this could be leading up to something, do we want to talk to Adrian? Fuck it, I'll talk to Adrian first. I was going to cut right there and leave you on the uh, cliffhanger, but let's see what, what Amsel has to say. Is he just going to tell us to find Adrian? The room goes quiet as everyone struggles to process what you've seen on the DVD. Finally, Dietrich breaks the silence. A dragon, son of a bitch. We would it set us up against a dragon. The Firewing... Paul's Ams Paul Amsel's voice is thick with dread. She lives. I'm really starting to regret the fact that I didn't just stay at the hotel. Agra ignores him. Wait a second. We don't know for certain. Dietrich lays her hands on Agra's shoulder. The evidence seemed pretty convincing to me, love. I'll even take it a step further. I think that secret facility that we stumbled into was her lair. The room falls silent. Agra and Glory change glances. After a moment, Dietrich continues. Just think about it. The Decker that Winters got those coordinates from was posting about for Schwingy. Then she was killed by that same orcish bastard that attacked us after Monica died. There's a direct link between the dragon, the scarred orc, and the half ill manor. And then Winters was killed by the same thing that killed Monica. Exactly. My gut tells me that the dragon is down there, slick. Some place far beneath the surface. I think that we knocked on the door to her lair without even knowing it. And I think that, given what we've seen, the dragon will do whatever it takes to keep us quiet about it. Okay, Metal Gear, going on the assumption that there is a dragon, and that she will come after us, what do you propose that we do about it? Uh, okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do, we're going to go for, yeah, fine for Claire seems like a good idea. Keep things simple, we head back there, kick in the door and kill the dragon. Wow. Anyone have any suggestions? No, I'm the leader, I choose. We're going to find Vauclair. Yeah, Slick is right, finding Dr. Vauclair should be our priority. If we're going up against a dragon, we need to find ourselves a dragon slayer. Winter spent 20 years searching for Vauclair, and it got him nowhere. How do you propose that we find him? With the help of an information broker. I'll go talk to Altuk then. For this? No. While Herr Bukazi, Bragazi is very capable, a task of this magnitude is beyond him. We need to make contact with the premier information broker in Berlin. We need to talk to Alice. Blitz scoffs at Amsel. Alice, best of luck, and I hope that you're rich. Amsel raises an eyebrow. For this, rich enough, even if only just. Who is this Alice? A most prominent figure in Berlin's shadow community. Ex. Schogwellenreiter. Maybe. She provides the information retrieval services for the F State. Amstel turns to the computer console behind him and runs his fingers over a virtual keyboard. The machine begins to hum. If Winters was right, if Vauclair is still alive, she can help us find him. The console spits out a stick of black plastic. Amstel plucks it from the computer and hands it to you. Here, your key to speak with Alice. A cred stick? Amstel nods. An encoded cred stick, yes, 10,000 Nguyen. Alice will not show her face for less. This represents the last of my personal savings slick. Make this meeting count. Where do I need to go? Take the U-Bahn to the Altstadt Spandau. There you will find a rabbit... A, a rabbit? <laughs> there you will find a connecting tube that the locals refer to as the rabbit hole. You will find a method of contacting Alice there. Oh, I see. Ah, I get it, I get it. Don't call it that in front of her, though. A word on the street is that she hates it. Please hurry. While you're out, I will work on acquiring new contracts for the team. Alice is the best there is at what she does, and her services carry a price tag to match. Cool. Can I move? Okay, wow. New objective. Take the U-Bahn to meet Alice. Uh, Amsel's and Cody cred stick. Oh man, there's so much stuff that we've got. We've got drug formulas. Oh, we could um, could probably take that to the guy, the weird druggy guy. 
Uh, and then auto injector. I guess we could take that to the to the dude um, to, at the clinic. So there's a few things we can do here. I mean, I I feel like take the U-Burn to meet Alice is obviously the primary mission. Um, so I think we should pop out into the street. Maybe check out the drug guy and the clinic and see if we can use those uh, spontaneous items. How much cash have we got? Two and a half thousand. Um, and then we'll head to the to the rabbit hole to meet Alice. But that's all going to happen next episode, guys, because I'm going to make a save point here. I know it auto saved, but I'd like to have a actual save just to be on the safe side. Um, so game saved. That's where I'm going to leave it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.